It's been about a year since I've gotten to touch a BBC. I'm talking about a big, beautiful Chevrolet. If you notice, something else is different. Something's new. I bought a new engine stand, and it's not that I broke the orange engine stand. The Dodge Ram V10 may have tweaked it a little bit, and I think it'll still work fine for four-cylinder Hondas and four-cylinder, maybe aluminum block engines are fine. But this 700-pound hunk of iron, uh, I, I like my floor, and I also like my toes and my feet. And this was about 300 bucks at my local drugstore, and uh, foot surgery is way more, concrete works way more. So there's a lot of reasons why there's a new stand here. It also has one of these things on it, which is great, so that I won't accidentally flip one over uncontrollably again. And the last 454 I tore down, it was blown up in spectacular fashion. If you haven't watched that video, you should go back, and it's a, it's a good one, I promise. This one may not be as bad, but it is locked up. And it's locked up tight. It doesn't go either direction. It doesn't have a dead spot in it. It is completely frozen. All I know from this yard that I bought this engine from is that it doesn't turn over and it's out of a 97 K2500 or maybe a 3500. It's out of a pickup truck. Now these engines were used from 96 through 2000. They make 290 horsepower and 410 foot pounds of torque, which is still less than the Dodge V10. Not trying to poke the bear too much. Now these engines have a pretty good reputation. A lot of people really like them, but they don't really rev that high. And I feel like that may have something to do with the last failure. This one, no idea, but we will find out. Well, you guys know how this works. The very first thing we're going to do is pull the plugs. Well, I think it's pretty evident what's going on here, judging by the fact that there's still water and rust, wet rust in some of these plugs. I think this thing, uh, it's got some water in it and that's probably, it's probably rusted shut. We'll see if we can get this thing turning over and maybe that's all that's wrong with it. Since we know that there's likely moisture in the cylinders on this engine, I'm going to spray some penetrator inside the, uh, spark plug holes and hopefully the time it takes to get down to that part of the teardown will have broken this up a little bit. Where's the hole? Well, there it is. This is not probably going to work that well, but we got to give it the old, the old try, you know? I didn't go to college all the way. Normally at this point we'd be trying to turn the engine over, but I think it's, it's, it's not even worth the effort at this point. I'll just either break the bolt off in the crank or take the bolt off. So. I'm going to strip the front of this engine down, we'll get the bracketry off of it, and then we'll start working on the manifolds. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is happening? Oh, this is heavy. Oh, I'm just, we're just going to pull really hard. These bolts will make good engine stand bolts. I'll just kind of leave that loose to keep that with it. Oh, we got another hider here. Ah, the reason blew so early here. It's really on there. What are we to do? Bah! It did nothing. Let's try it again. Well, it's... Let's give it some loose juice here. Really shouldn't talk about loose juice with a BBC. Let's see if we can take that stud out. That's probably just going to break the end of it off. Well, that didn't last very long. Well, now what? Nope. Let's try something just a, a little bit bigger. I'm sure this is safe here. So I bent the stud. Honestly, I'm all right if that stud breaks. I 
You know what? I don't know why I'm doing this. This stand has brakes on it. Let's see if I can figure out how to use them. Oh, yes. Much better. Yep. Broke the stud. That's okay. We can extract that. And I can work on getting that broken stud out of the bracket. Now it's time for the EGR pipe. Now in the last video, many of you were very quick to remind me that this part is no longer available and that I ruined a $500 EGR tube. Well, first off, it wasn't gonna come off on its own and I just skipped all of the struggling. So I'm going to give it a shot. We're going to try to get it off the right way. And then when we fail, we're gonna cut it off. I'm sure it'll work. I'm sure I need to put the brakes on. What? Okay, that's only one side. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And I'm glad I sprayed this down earlier. Because if this comes off, then this core is... I'm already in the green if this comes off. Oh, I, I can do this. I just need to find something to hold that. Wait, is this broken? No, that's just the sleeve. Oh man, I can't believe it. I might be able to get this off in one piece. Okay, Let's see here. Wow. Nope, that's how I hurt myself. Okay, what else can we do here? Okay, let me, uh, let me get it hot. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Now that, that's worth as much as anything else on this engine. So if anybody needs this, I have a good big block EGR tube. Now we can start pulling the exhaust manifolds off. Ah, oh, that one broke off. Oh, we're moving now. I need to uh, disconnect this secondary air stuff here. Oh, wait, wait, what? All right, I'm not trying to, it's almost too good to be true, right? It's, what just, ha what just happened? The dipstick came out, no struggle. What is happening today? <laughs> now before we do anything else, I want to drain it and it sounds empty but I'd like to make sure that's not oil or is it that new stuff zero w zero and a lot of it I think it's it's gonna be pretty clear what happened here I I think are we gonna get any oil in there just water. Oh, I see. Oh, I don't know what that was, but I'm just gonna let that drain for a minute. I'm glad that's not on my floor. While that's draining, I'm gonna take a minute and try to strip this uh, upper intake and get it ready to come off here. Hmm, that's just gonna come off with the intake, I feel. Yes. Let's see if that was it. Oh, that was it. Before we go any further and start zipping any more bolts out, I need to get what's left of this distributor out. Oh, it's gonna be like that. At least it came out. 
All right, next I need to loosen the bolts that hold the fuel pressure regulator on because it blocks some of the bolts that hold the lower manifold on to the cylinder heads. And looks like I might have to pull the rail or I can bend it out of the way. Hmm, what is the right way to do it? Let's bend it. I'll just use a wrench on it, it'll be fine. Yeah, I can get a wrench on that. Let's get this radiator hose out of the way here. All right, now we're just gonna zip a bunch of bolts out, the easy ones, then we'll get to the hard ones. And like any good seasoned technician, you leave the, the hardest one for last. I'm kidding because I'm, I'm not one of those. All right, now this thing, it should be loose. It's got a handle on it. Perfect. Oh, that is not perfect. Well, that is pretty ugly and it smells like a wet, greasy warehouse. It's, it's not super desirable, but it does bring back some memories. It looks like pretty much every cylinder looks this way, which tells me tells me there's water in here. Water. That one's got some science experiments going on in there. And this is the only one that looks good. It probably allowed water to pass. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe this thing sucked in water, or maybe it was in a flood. We'll find out when we get these valve covers off, I guess. The cooling system was in suboptimal condition. And the exhaust ports. Pretty similar, lots of signs of water, especially that one. Whew. On the other side, I don't see anything destroyed yet. I mean, it's destroyed from water, but it, nothing catastrophic. We're gonna start by peeling off the left valve cover. Oh. oh man, I'm actually nauseous. I don't know what flavor of sauce this is, but I do know that I wouldn't like it. A little bit of sludge, water and oil. It's gross. Let's go to the other side and see if it's any better. It, it actually is, it's, it's rusty but it's not as bad. Oh, the smell is worse on this side though. Or maybe I just gave it some ventilation. We're gonna start dismantling the passenger side or right side. Let's see how these come apart. Not too bad. Watch out. push rods. Well, the ends of the push rods look okay. I don't see anything that has anything other than a mirror finish. Rockers don't look too bad either. It's hard to say how much, how many miles were on this thing just because of how it looks. Now, I don't know if these head bolts are going to make any noise. Typically, they don't, but we'll try. Oh man, I don't know if I can get them out. I need the bigger breaker bar. Hopefully they don't break on me. Oh no, they're fine. record I just did that completely out of order I even missed one I don't even know what's going on tonight I missed two all 
Now I remember these heads were pretty heavy, so we're gonna get blue to kind of break the seal as such. Okay, well, I'm all right, and the floor is okay, and the head landed on a stud, so we're good. But we're going to learn from that. That is also really heavy. Man, talk about rust. Man, this is going to be a lot of fun to turn over. We might be able to get it, though. Never say never. We're still going to try. Here's what the head looks like. Again, it did take a spill, but it just landed on this stud, and I kind of softened the blow, I think. The head gasket looks, eh, bad. I mean, look at this. Cooling passages are gross. This is incredibly rough. I think that's like most of the way plugged up. Is that one there? Oh, ha. Huh. It's like a scratcher's ticket. Well, I did not zero the scale out before I put this head on there, but it's actually 73 pounds. The scale showed three pounds before I put the head on there. The 73 pounds, that's five pounds lighter than the V10 Magnum heads. And it's, it's only got four cylinders. Before we go taking the other side head off, let's see if we can remove this bolt tray. Or is it a tool tray? Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't really look good under here either. Yikes. Now let's pull the rockers off of this head. Now we'll look at the push rods. Well, they are really ugly, but I don't think any of them are bent. Right now we'll crack these head bolts loose. And I'm actually going to leave this one a few threads in, I'll break the seal, and then I'll zip that bolt out. Oh! oh. Somehow this side looks worse. The amount of rust in these cylinders is gonna make getting this thing turning over quite a challenge. I still think we can do it. We're just going to, um, we're gonna to have to work at it. I don't see anything blown up. So obviously the, uh, the rust is what's keeping this thing from turning over. We've got one decent cylinder here and the rest of these rusty. This head, about just like the other. Oh, that's actually metal there. I didn't know. It's really chunky. This is uh, it's kind of kind of good actually, because I think I'm gonna get a lot of good parts out of this. Let's see if we can get this head gasket off of here. Yeah, it's perfect. Whew. Yeah. It's hard to say whether these heads will clean up or not. Obviously, they're going to need a fair bit of machine work. Next, we're going to try to get all these lifters out. I say try. Well, let's see if these will even come out. Ha 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 No. No, that's, that's a lost cause. We might have to just try to turn the engine over 
and the cam will push them and, and break them free. Now I'm gonna load the cylinders up with some penetrator and hopefully break up some of this rust. And uh, I've got some ideas I'm trying to break that rust up a little bit. The rings will work really good, but I also don't wanna break anything. You know, I don't wanna damage the motor in any way. Well, this is the tool I've decided to try first. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Oh man, look at that cross hatching. That's a hell of a lot better. I may need a ridge reamer, which I don't think I have one here. Whew. It's doing an all right job. Let's go to the other side. Now I'm hoping that this cylinder here, I don't need to do very much with since it's at the top of the bore or close to it. But these two will definitely need. Uh oh. Oh man. Wow, this is really pitted. This has been sitting with water in it for a long time. I'm having my doubts, guys. Oh, it's got this pit. Why did I even put my finger down? Oh. All right, screw it. I did not think I was gonna get this dirty tonight. All right, well, we've done a decent number on it so far. I suppose we can attempt to turn this thing over. We're gonna rock it back and forth a few times. Let's uh, see if we can. That's not gonna work. Oh, I'm gonna break that bolt off. Whew. I was really hoping that I could do this and it would turn everything and push all the junk out, but I don't think it's going to happen. Well, what shall we do? We could pull the pan, start taking it apart. Could do that, but I really want to use the crank to drive the rods and pistons up. And I'm sure some of these will come up, no problem. It's just there's a few of these that are really unhappy. I got some of these loose. It's a thing. Yeah, that's right at the uh, crown of the piston is that rust is really bad. Right, we're gonna give it one more try. I just did a bunch more machining. Give it one more try, and then we'll uh, flip it over and pull the pan. Yeah. No, we're just gonna flip it over and pull the pan. Oh, this is this is deluxe. Okay, see how bad this is. Yeah, I don't know that this is gonna come apart. It may, we may get lucky. Looks like I can get to, I can get to most of the rod cap bolts. I think we're gonna be okay here. Let's get this oil pump out of the way first. Oh, water just ran out of that. Well, that's not a good sign. Well, we have our work cut out for us. It seems like there's rust on the bottom of the bore underneath the pistons and rings, which is one other reason why this may be so tough. Another reason could be that the wrist pins are frozen, in which case it's got leverage on me, or maybe I have leverage on it. Either way, we're going to have to take this apart to get this apart. And that was the most profound thing I think I've ever said. I'm going to give this a quick douse of some penetrator. Everything's rusty in here. Make sure we get all the wrist pins. We have a shot at this. Something else I just noticed, it looks like this freeze plug is pushed out. That doesn't really make a lot of sense unless this thing was full of water when it and it froze. But how would water enter the cooling system if the truck was complete? And if the truck wasn't complete, how would it push a freeze plug out? These are questions I don't have the answer to. The first thing I'm going to do is start with cylinder two. We're going to re remove the rod cap and we're going to try to drive the rod and piston up to the top of the bore. Oh, 
Aha, uh -huh, we have a gap. Now we're just going to give it a little tap. Just a little. Oh, the rod cap's going to come off. I thought the rod cap was going to come off. Okay. One rod cap removed. Now I'm not going to remove the bearing. I'm going to actually use that as a protective shell in case something goes horribly wrong. I'm just going to give us a bunch of little taps. All right, well, yeah, that's, um, that wrist pin is stiff. Well, this rod and piston's at the top of the bore, so we might as well drive it the rest of the way out. We'll just get one piece of the puzzle out of the equation. Well, I think we can do this. It's kind of moving. I think once we get past the first ring, that's when you want to pick up the phone. Ooh, this is, it is not budging. Let's give it some momentum, shall we? Nope, it's, there's something at the top there. Let's get the wire wheel machining tool. There's probably just some inaccessible rust here that's keeping it from coming out. It's, it's literally bouncing off of whatever's it, keeping this thing from coming out. All right, now, now I'm gonna beat the crap out of it. I'm gonna beat the tar out of it is what I meant to say. I think that's as far as it's been. The, oh, oh, we got a ring sticking out. I think we're crowning here. Man, I'm giving this thing pretty good wax here. Oh, man. This might be a lost cause. We're still gonna try. Let's get a bigger hammer. Oh, man. We're at the second ring. Oh, yes. Come to me. Well, yeah, it freed up pretty well. Not proud of what I had to do to get this out. Man, that's just one. That's a total of about 10 minutes on one cylinder. Now I'm gonna skip a few. We're gonna go to cylinder six just for the sake of ease. We'll do six, we'll do eight, and then we'll come back and we'll see what we can get out here. Pull some main caps, try to loosen the resistance. See what happens. I'm going to just spray the rest of this down the rest of the way. This is all super rusty. I really don't want to hit the crank there, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the crank out anyway. It'd be a real shame. I think all it's doing is, uh, yeah, just push the stud through. That's not, that's a, that's a little sub, sub ideal. Yep. Whew. This feels like I'm fighting a losing battle. Well, you know, I guess we could always get the big bar and try to turn it over that way. I'm going to go with that's not going to work. Not yet anyway. I've decided to go straight to eight. I don't know if that's going to be a good decision or not, but I think I can get the rod and piston out pretty easily. And we'll try seven after that. I'm looking at some of the other ones that I think I can get out. It's not very many. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now we're just gonna actually Hammer straight on the uh, piston. I, I know that could damage it. I, I don't I don't really care. 
Yes. Movement. Well, this is going to take a little effort here, but it's moving and that's all that matters. Man, that's some thick stuff. I don't know how that's going to make it past it. Huh. I thought I was just going to slide right out. Uh huh. Okay. Well, we have 25% of the rods and pistons out. It's a, it's a great start. I know that this isn't going to work. I, this is not going to stop me from trying it. Nope. So let's keep going. I'm, at this point, I think I'm just going to release some of the rod caps. We'll get this one, this one, this one, and this one released. We'll see if I can rock it and bang it back and forth. I don't think that the main caps are rusted up, just judging by the way that the uh, uh, rod bearings look, but I, don't, I have no idea if that's actually the way it is. And now I'm going to see if I can drive these studs out so they don't hit the uh, crank. And now I'm going to slide some hose onto that. Protect the crank journal. Not that that's going to even be good when we're done here, but all I can do is try. All right, well, this one seems to be pretty pretty free there. All right, see if we can get this the rest of the way out. Well, that's three out. I guess I guess we're getting somewhere. Now we're going to get number five. my hose on there. I'm giggling every time I say that. Oh yeah. Easy peasy. We're doing it. We currently have half of the rods and pistons out of this thing. I'm going to give it another valiant try to turn this over. Uh, let's get the big bar. Oh, no. Very much no. Well, that's not going to work. I got the cap off. All right, let's see if we can get this one out of here. Cylinder one. I can go through the bore. Yeah. Oh, I can't get it out now. Well, I got it out. No, well, there's the cap for number one. Slide into these hoes. I think it's laughing at me. Oh, now we're moving. This may be the last piston that we can drive out, actually. Now oh, I got bearings flying. Oh no, it's just like the other side. Well, let's see if that freed anything up anyway. Maybe we can uh, at least turn the crank over. <laughs> it is just not gonna happen. Same thing that happened on the uh, on cylinder two. All right, desperate times calls for desperate measures. I have not had this problem in several cylinders. Watch out. I mean, I'm beating the, the, the tar out of this thing. 
and it's just going, huh, I'm about ready to throw in the towel and start working on something else. Exactly what we're gonna do. Let's try to see, let's see if we can get the uh, crank pulley off, pull the timing cover. Let's, let's take a break from that. Oh, I just shot a whole bunch of oil out of it. Did not expect that. Now I need to get a puller. Now I've been, been down this road before and it kind of screwed me up. So let's see if we can do this the right way this time. I've got the end of this thing greased and let's just see what we can do here. Oh yes. Oh, well, that feels good. Now we can get this timing cover off with the right socket. And there's a timing cover. Neat. Does this light off here? No. Another possibility too is that the cam is locked up and that's keeping the crank. I would think that there'd be enough slack. See? I don't know. I don't believe that either. Let's get the right size socket again. Look at this chain. Man, that thing is it's beefy. All right, I'm going to try once more to bar this thing over. Oh. It moved. Yeah. I don't know if it's moving in the right direction, but it's moving. That's awesome. Well, that is, uh, that's pretty good. I have one more rod cap. This one right here. If I keep going, if I can keep getting it to turn over, I might be able to get all of the bolts out of it. In fact, I think I can get this rod out of it right now. Let's do that. Yeah. That comes right out. If I can get this crankshaft to turn a little bit further, I should be able to get both of the nuts off this rod cap, release the tension from this, and then we can pull all the main caps up, pull the crank out of it, and hopefully knock the rest of the rods and pistons out. How do we do this? Problem is we're trying to turn it backwards. So if I put the uh, bolt back in it, it's not gonna it's not gonna help me. I have an idea. It's probably not good though. What could go wrong? Oh, I don't have the brakes on. The brakes are on, but the floor is not so great. So I can tighten these things. No dice there. Oh yes. Well, I moved it a little. Haha, <laughs> blue. Yeah, blue. I think that's far enough. Yes. Yes, it's, it's coming apart. Going to pull the crank next. We're going to get all the main caps broken loose. Once I get the right size socket again. I'm not sure if these will make any noise, but we're going to find out. I'm already dirty. It's okay if you start in the back. Oh, 
Oh, oh. Oh, well. Seal is it's perfect, actually. Oh boy, it's been a long time coming to get this thing out. I also don't know how heavy it is. Oh, it's not too bad. Well, this crank, I thought it was going to be in better shape, but it isn't. There is definitely water sitting against that between the bearing and the journal. Same there. In fact, the rod journals look pretty good, considering. I mean, those bearings still have some damage, but compared to the, the mains, I can't even get... Well, that might come off. Let's see. Oh, it's harsh. Now, some of this could be when I was turning the crank over. Uh, you know, th it, there was no lubricant in there, and there was, uh, there was rust. There still is rust. Now, I don't know if this crank is savable. I'm sure it is. I don't know if it's worth the machine work or if anyone will want it after it's been machined. But it's out. And here's what we've got left. You can see the cam is really rusty. I'm not even going to make an attempt. Mm -mm, nope. That's going to that's gonna stay in the, in the block unless somebody really wants me to get it out and to buy the block. But that could be somebody else's problem. It's just so much rust on these bearings. Now I think we can get the rest of these these three rods and pistons out. Finish the job. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're just Yeah, we need we need some uh some dead weight behind this. Oh man, what is keeping this from coming out? Nothing. Let's see if we can't get this one out. Something's gonna come apart. Yeah? Oh yeah, is it coming? Yeah! Did it break something? Man, that is ugly on the bottom now. I don't really care. Alright, against my better judgment, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna make an attempt at this. This is, this is a terrible idea. It's just, it's just awful. But that's what you're here for. Terrible ideas. So my idea, this terrible idea, is to go through this crankcase ventilation hole and do one of these numbers Try to try to turn it, turn the crank over or the cam over. No, oh. <laughs> it's it's bending my punch. Oh, oh yes. That doesn't mean it's coming out. That just means it moves. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. I don't know if we can get these lifters out. The lifters are lifting. Now my hope is that they won't fall back down. I haven't been paying attention enough. Let's see, do they go back down? And the rust will just keep them all in the top of their... Yeah, I think that's what's happening. The one time I'm praising rust. I don't see any retracting. I don't see any moving anymore. 
Success. Now we need to see if we can pry this cam out of here carefully. Carefully, of course. Come here, Blue. I have no idea if that's going to be enough between the cams and the lifters, or cam and the lifters to, oh, 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 no, but, but, but I think I can get these out, or at least I can do this. Okay, we're uh, looking pretty good here. Okay, I think the cam will come out now, maybe. Does this turn by hand? Oh, would you look at that? Let me drop a lifter. No. We have one more thing to take apart, the oil pump. I wouldn't deprive you guys of that, but I am curious as to why that's not a three ace. And instead it's a 10, a 10 on the oil pump. Well, I don't know if I can get that all the way out, but this actually looks pretty good. Let me clean this all off. This actually looks pretty decent in here. It's a little bit of wear. But who knows how many miles are on this thing. There's some scratches there at the top. It's not terrible though. Sorry guys, this is a, an absolute mess. All of the rod bearings kind of look like this. They have some wear, but it's hard to say whether that's, you know, from mileage or from a problem. Again, I don't have details on this thing. I did look at the back side of the bearing, one of these I cleaned up, and they are from two of 96 and they say GM standard on them. So I don't know if they've been replaced, but if they have, that was right after the truck was made. And I probably, I, I don't know that I would use any of these rods and pistons after what that took to get these out, but they may make good desk ornaments. That's probably the nicest one. And what's odd is this one cleaned up really well compared to the other. So maybe this thing was chewing on some coolant and then it was parked and then it was in a flood after that. And that would also explain why some of the freeze plugs were migrating outwards. And some of these took a lot of force to get out. I mean, a lot. They are ugly. Now, I'm sure after they go through my parts washer, they'll look pretty nice. So again, I know I probably did some damage knocking them out, but I mean, I don't know what else to do besides soak it for days and days. And I, I don't have, I don't have days. And the cam has quite a bit of rust on it. I, I think this thing was, was pushing coolant through the oiling system at least a, a little bit, because I don't know, how, even if it was flooded, how water would find its way in through the entire oiling system, especially to get to the main bearings. I, th I think this thing must have had a prior problem. Or maybe it just sat for a long time underwater. Now some of these bores are a lot better than others. Of course, I did some machine work. It's gonna need uh, overbore for sure. I don't know how far, and I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if these blocks are desirable or not. The last one I had blew a section of the uh, the bore apart, so I, it was pretty much done at that point. But I don't see any cracks. I don't see any, it's just really rusty. And surprisingly, I, I was able to get all the rods and pistons out. That was kind of shocking, just considering. It's hard to say whether this was a good engine or a bad engine when it was flooded. Typically, a complete running and driving vehicle has a sealed cooling system, so flood water has no way of getting in. And we saw water everywhere in this engine, which leads me to think that maybe this thing was half taken apart in somebody's backyard when it was flooded. Maybe it had no radiator in it, or maybe the engine was stored somewhere that was flooded. We'll never know the answer there. Either way, this thing was rough. 
The head gaskets didn't look that great. The freeze plugs, were, two of them were migrating out of the block. But the rust. Typically, a big block Chevrolet, any pushrod Chevrolet, is an easy engine to work on. But the rust made this one so much more difficult. I'm, I'm absolutely filthy. I've got rust juice all over me. It's in my hair. But I still feel like I won. The last 454 I tore down, I got jammed up at the harmonic balancer. I couldn't get it all the way apart. Couldn't get the timing cover or the cam out of it. Couldn't pull the crank. And I was determined to not let that happen again. There's a lot of you that watch this channel that have been working on cars longer than I've been alive. And collectively, you all know way more than I will ever possibly know. And I read all the comments because of that. There's so much information in the comments. So if you're not reading the comments, you should, you're missing out. You should absolutely read those comments. I used a lot of your tips and tricks to get this thing torn down. I remembered things like that. The Duramax engine, when that was locked up, you guys left a lot of tips on how to get that freed up. And I used many of those tonight to get this thing torn down. And I, I won because I got more parts to sell, a lot of really good parts, and it, it feels great. So if you'd like to buy parts off of this big block Chevrolet or anything else I've torn down, or if you want to buy parts off of this Rouse supercharged Mustang, or I got another Land Cruiser in for parts, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading all of the parts cars we're getting in, as well as our loose parts. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown as always. I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.